Townsville residents got together this week to have a bit of a chat about the teenage or the crime epidemic that is currently washing over Townsville and uh, causing a lot of people a lot of heartache. It seems to be centred around young thieves who are stealing cars at a rate of up to six per day, risking their own lives and the lives of countless other people on the road with their high speed and often reckless driving. They're robbing families of the means to get around, taking kids to school, going shopping, and quite often the cars are stolen from the elderly, which means they have no way of commuting, commuting around the neighbourhood. We went along to the meeting, we chatted just about everybody that had talked to us, we had a bit of a listen, so here we present an overview of what happened at the Townsville Community Crime. Steve, a reasonable gathering looked like showing up here tonight, um, all about community safety and how people can be a little bit safer in their homes and with their possessions. How can people help themselves? Well. The message we want to get across to them tonight is uh, that they lock up their houses, uh, they make sure that their car keys are, in the, are hidden or with them at all times. Uh, at the moment these uh, young offenders are breaking into houses. Over 70% of the uh, property offences in Townsville at the moment are uh, uh, done by juvenile offenders, it appears, and uh, they're, they're getting into houses believe not through unlocked doors. Uh, the other things people can do is get to know your neighbours. Get the phone up and keep an eye on your neighbour's house. So, uh, Organise your streets if possible, but, but keep an eye on it for each other. That's what we're Australians, that's what we do. Does there appear to be any hot spots in Townsville in general? No, not really. No, it's just all over town, really. And uh, how do our statistics in Townsville stack up with uh, statewide statistics? Oh, I can't answer that. Okay. <laughs> the easy one, <laughs> a hard one. And uh, also, um, with property crime, there are things also with what people can do within the property, within the house, recording serial numbers and things like that? Yes, certainly. Everyone's got a digital camera. Take photos, photographs of your, of your television and uh, not so much the larger items that are being stolen. At the moment, it's, it's smaller, lots smaller things, jewellery, uh, car keys, of course, and cars. And uh, what should be the first course of action uh, should uh, someone come home and find their house has been turned over? There's obviously police link now and local police. Uh, what should be the appropriate course of action? If the matter's not urgent, go through your police link or ring your local police station. If, you, if there's an offender on the premises, well, use your AAA. Get the police there, we'll come out. Carla, uh, some uh, trying times for the community of Townsville uh, with the uh, local crime rate seeming to go through the roof. Uh, any ideas? Oh, look, people are getting sick of their cars being stolen, their houses are being broken into, and really, tonight's a very good example of the level of frustration that people are, are feeling regarding crime and the level of crime. And, and, and I guess when you have a look at the big picture here, and particularly youth crime, uh, there's certainly some serious questions that need to be asked about how it's being dealt with, how it's being managed, and going forward, how do we actually stop this? And uh, what have been some of the council initiatives that have uh, helped to uh, assist in uh, curbing the crime rate? Well, we made a ma major announcement uh, yesterday uh, to upgrade our CCTV network to the tune of $1.5 million, a number of additional cameras, uh, better retrieval and storage capacity, more live feeds into our monitoring centre and our police communication centre. Uh, certainly, uh, we have a role to play in terms of supporting the police. Um, with these issues and the broader community. And really, I think if we're going to solve uh, crime in Townsville, it's going to take a whole of community approach, all three levels of government and the citizens of this community standing up and saying enough's enough. And uh, have you had any personal uh, stories mentioned to you or, or, or you know, told to you about uh, crime within your area? Oh, look, I've had a number of people have had their cars stolen. And, and for some people, you know, it's their only means of transport. There's a lot of significant investment tied up in their motor vehicles. And to have their vehicles stolen and crashed uh, really upsets a, a lot of people. And, uh, and and you feel for those people and, and they're frustrated because uh, in a lot of cases it's young offenders and they're not seeing justice being done. Do you feel the courts are doing enough to uh, support the police in their work? Oh, look, I've openly said uh, on a number of occasions that I think we need to get tougher with these kids. I think there needs to also be a lot more work done at the point of release uh, from prison uh, for these young offenders. I don't think there's enough there being done to uh, really steer them in the right direction when they are being released from, uh, from internal prison. Challenging times ahead for Townsville community with crime at the moment. Um, what can uh, the council at the moment offer people in uh, way of some support? Um, in terms of um, trying to deal with the social aspects, Council could be looking to run more community-based programs and bring all the, all the groups involved together on a regular basis to try and help deal with these issues. We're actually looking at, within our group, we've released a policy. We talk about managing 
um, right, right at the very beginning with the vandalism and the graffiti, hitting that hard so kids know they're not going to get away with doing that sort of activity. It's like similar to what they did in New York with what they called the broken window policy. If you really hit them hard on the little things, they don't try and do the big things. And that's some of the things we used to do previously in Townsville City Council. We'll look to monitor the CCTV cameras. There are cameras at Riverway Skate Park. There are cameras at Vickers Bridge. We've got all sorts of CCTV vision available, but because we're not monitoring the cameras, the information's useless to us. Do you feel that the Townsville community is doing enough to help themselves, uh, preventing their own you know, selves being victims of crime? Well, some of the things, um, I was door knocking today and came across six properties that have lost their vehicles. And it's a sad thing that people really need to be vigilant in terms of making sure their doors are locked when they go to bed at night, um, their cars are locked when they go to bed at night. You now, sometimes we forget, and um, I was speaking to people today who were saying to themselves, you know, we're lucky, sometimes we've gone to sleep with our front door unlocked, but nothing's happened. Do you feel that the police are getting enough support from the courts when they do, do arrest a young offender? I think the courts need to look at their sentencing. There are some real issues there especially with repeat offenders, and I think people are sick and tired of the, the um, revolving door policy. Over 50% of, of these crimes, the, the cars aren't locked, the houses aren't locked. Uh, people leave their car keys in their cars still. Uh, but we continually try to reinforce this, 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 um, th these issues. But there is, a, there is an issue there's some, with, with some areas of youth. Um, that's, that's certainly true in relation to property crime. 75% of the property crime is committed by juveniles in Townsville. That's a pretty staggering, uh, staggering figure. Uh, we read in the papers every day about cars being stolen. Seven last night, I think. Um, so it's affecting all of us. Um, uh, this police officers have been broken into. You know, you forget that we we have family and friends and stuff within the community, and it's affecting everybody. So uh, yeah, it's an issue. So the next question is, how can we make our neighbourhoods at home safer? Well, it's fairly simple. You know, we're all Australians. How many of you know your neighbours? Who your neighbours are? How many people know your neighbours' phone numbers? How many people in your neighbours have your phone numbers? Lock your doors. Lock your cars. Go to Bunnings and buy a $30 safe and throw your keys in it, as was suggested by one of the media guys. It's, 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 unfortunately, our society is changing. It's, it's not like when we grew up as kids. Some of those guys in their 50s here my age, when you could go out and leave your house unlocked and your car unlocked, and your keys, or whatever, you could leave your house open. You can't do that anymore. That's just that's, that's the fact of life. We have to get used to it and live with it. Um, by the same token, I don't believe we should be hiding behind steel doors, but, uh, I mean, a lot of these crimes aren't crimes of violence. They're just, they're sneak thefts, opportunists. Uh, a window left ajar, a door left open. Um, so, get to, you know, you can form little neighbourhood. If you don't do the proper neighbourhood watch stuff, do stuff in your street. Talk to people in your street. Get their phone numbers. Get to know each other. You see somebody sneaking around my house, I'll ring you or you ring me. Things, just little things like that. And when something happens in your street, all get out there and find, look and see what's going on in your street. Don't hide behind closed doors. What you've got to remember is you solve crimes. We don't. We just we facilitate the, 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 the capture of these people and all the rest of it. But if we don't have your eyes and ears and what you can tell us, that's the end of it, really, isn't it? I mean, we have fingerprints and all that other stuff, obviously, but ultimately, people solve crimes. So that's my message. And, you know, we, this, we continually reinforce this in the media, but it just doesn't get through. People still do it, you know? Do um, you have a question? Yeah, has the power of the house has been raided or not, has it? Yeah, and that's probably the, the issue, uh, hard for me to say. Yeah, but how do you know it hasn't been raided? It may have been attended to, they may have raided it once or twice already, so... It, just because they get raided doesn't mean they stop. That's the problem. That's, that's our society, mate, you know, so... Sorry? Well, I, I can't speak for the justice system. All I can speak is for what the police... We're bound by rules and regulations the same as everybody else, basically, so... It's maybe a question you can have for them. We'll keep some questions to the end, if we can. Uh, just a final question I have for you guys is, what are the numbers we're supposed to call and when? What's the situation to call triple zero? And when do we call the 
Well, it doesn't really know what police link is. Police link is a, uh, it's a quick way to report minor crime, and that's what it's for, minor crime. So if, if, if you come home and find a window broken in your car, there's no, there's no one around, there's nothing around, or a window broken in your house or something from, a, from an attempted entry, or even a, an entry where nothing's been stolen, that's when you use your police link. It's a 131444 number, and it goes through to an operator, and then they will detail that to a police officer who will come and take a complaint, or take your complaint on the phone. You may never even see a police officer if there's no evidence that can be gained by the police coming. If there's an offender there, if there's a, uh, somebody who's witnessed the crime, uh, it's just happened, use your AAA and, and we'll come. You know, like uh, somebody breaks into your house, you see them running down the street, ring AAA, don't try and ring your local station. If it's a mi very minor thing, you can just ring your local station. Uh, you know, somebody's stolen your push bike, that sort of stuff. We have a number of uh, programs Now that's something that it's difficult for a council to try and stop, but it's something that you as parents, if you're involved in your sporting clubs and things like that, should be stamping your feet up and down about it. In terms of getting some of these kids into sport, that's something that probably moves more into the realms of where David is in Parliament. Firstly, I think the excuse that the kids are bored is too often a cop-out. Yes. yes. When I was a kid, we found things to do that didn't involve stealing cars, breaking into houses, taking people's property. You know, why, is, why do we as good people and ratepayers have to find things for kids to do? The council's job is to provide safe places, provide parks, light the areas, put security cameras in. I agree with all of that. But entertaining the kids, entertaining the kids, finding them something to do, I think is a bit of a cop-out. The second part, and I'll agree with, with Councillor Last, I don't know that it's the council's solution to, to subsidise these, kid, these kids into it. That's, that's a nightmare. I've been involved with junior sport with my three, two kid, three kids as well, and I know it costs a lot to do. Throwing money at disadvantaged kids to entice them to play sport isn't necessarily going to get them on the field. They've got to want to do it. So they're my two answers to that two-part question, I think. Uh, 
awesome night. We're very pleased with the turnout. Um, it started out of a frustration, um, the frustration that we saw on Facebook um, with people being broken into every day, cars being stolen um, and people just fed up. Well, there's a big turnout here tonight, but I dare say that the support from the community has been even greater than the uh, public turnout that we're seeing here tonight. What have some of the people been telling you? Oh, absolutely. People are saying that this is what the, the city has needed. This is what, um, you know, something that we really need to get going and happening. Uh, have you had any uh, personal experience with crime in Townsville? Uh, yes, I have. I, my partner had his car stolen um, in May last year. Uh, it was found a week later. We did get it returned undamaged. Um, and then my brother also had his house broken into and then his car stolen on the same day. Okay, some of the outcomes from the meeting tonight, what are you hoping to achieve after and from here on in? Um, look, we're just looking for solutions. We know we can't change the law, but we're just looking for different solutions, different ideas, different formats, different forums in which to help these kids. Um, prevention is ideally um, our solution. Have you had any comments from the younger community, from the kids of the area who are basically in the same position as the adults and fed up with the crime? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, they are feeling they're being tarred with the same brush. If you had a wish list for our mayoral candidates here tonight, what would be number one on the top of the list? Uh, would it be, would it be uh, greater programs for youth? Would it be more security on the streets? Oh, definitely. Um, the youth, th th there is a lot of underprivileged youth. There is a lot of people that can't afford to be doing stuff. Um, we need to be giving them more things to do, occupying their time. It's boredom. They're not doing it because of money. They're not doing it. They're not selling the cars. They're doing it because they're bored. We need to find solutions for that boredom. <laughs> Now, where that comes from is judges are government appointed. They don't upset the political people, it's as simple as that. The United States judges are appointed by the people. If you don't have to guess what happens? They get kicked out, it's as simple as that. The police, it's a they're doing their job. I'm not the police, but I'll tell you that because you all know that. To our elected representatives and our potential elected representatives, there's no point me saying the same thing that these three have said and I'm sure Harry's about to say as well. You tell me and tell David, do we want to enforce mandatory minimum sentencing? Yes. yes. Do we want to downgrade Cleveland Bay so that it's not a holiday yes. camp? Yes. Do we want to have community service? Do we want these kids doing the work, cleaning up the crap that they call us? Yes. yes. Do we want more police numbers? Yes. You don't need me to tell you that. Yes. Originally, I was born across the road here 73 years ago. I was a major tow truck uh, contractor in Sydney, and between Parramatta Prison and Long Bay Jail, that strip right through there, you have the criminal families, three and four and five generations who have been in and out of prison. In Townsville here, I was the main contractor here for 20 years. I was the main contractor for both councils, right? You have a major criminal line of families here. Dad comes down to go to Stewart Prison. He's got three or four years. The family comes down, Dad comes out of prison and uh, the kids are in school, we won't move. So we have a very, you've got to understand, we do have a major criminal population here where Stewart Prison is regarded as the motel. I'll give you an example. I took a car up to Kelso, and uh, when I got there, there was a big party going at seven o'clock. So I got out of the, I knew this fella, and I got out of the truck and I said, hey, you're going away tomorrow. Oh yeah, yeah. He said, you wouldn't believe how lucky I was. I, I stole this beautiful station. And I had it for two days, I was hiding it, I was having a great time. And I come around this corner, you wouldn't believe it, I T-boned a Jaguar. He said, wasn't that fantastic? I ride off two beautiful cars in the one go. And all the kids and people there went, hooray, hooray, hooray. Now, how did I combat with the kids in, in, in Sydney, trying to divert them, and here in Townsville for over 20 years? As a main contractor for the council, when the, when the cars were being buried, I had my own paddock at the Bowley, where I kept 100 cars. Right? So I got to know all these kids who came from the Housing Commission, from single mothers or their fathers or crims, no one's interested in these kids. So I'd say, right, they'd ring me up Friday and they'd say, hey, have you got a bush basher for us? And I'd say, yes. Okay, but you've got to get it started. Right? So out to my paddock they'd come, and I didn't make it too hard for them. You know, I'd say, oh, there's a battery there, I don't know if it's too good. So they'd all get there and they'd put the battery in. 
No, so did you bring any petrol? Oh yeah, we bought a little petrol. So they'd muck around there for an hour to get the car started and around the paddock they go. No fancy fitsman or anything like that. And I'll just add this. These kids who live on acreages with their parents who've got a big open flat or born on dairy farms or whatever it is, they learn to drive at 19 years of age, banging around the paddock. These kids who live in the housing commission, they've got absolutely nothing. So oh, for over 20 years here in Townsville, I kept these kids off the street by supplying them with bombs. You, you're, uh, uh, I, I knew your father from Alligator Creek Meekworks, a great man. There's a salt pan out there in Anoomba. If they lived in Anoomba Way or Wagaroo, I'd take the cars there for them on a Saturday. If they lived out Saunders Beach Way, I'd, I'd take them there. So if they're out my way near the Bowley, I'd take them there. So what you've got to do is, you get the cars, you get a paddock for the kids, and encourage them to come there, and I used to have a rule. No alcohol and no drugs. And the kids were the happiest in the world, and we had never had the crime rate we got now. Look at all these people here. Um, you guys are in a position, honestly, to do anything at state level or federal level to fix anything. You know, what we really need is we need, uh, you know, Dave, you're, you're here. We need you to step up and do something. It's got to be legislated. Now, these guys, you know, how many did they catch and how many offences? It's just crap. You know, we need to do something here where there's legislation. Yeah, we've got a problem. We need to stand up and fix that problem. Then let's look at bringing through the generations and, and the sport or whatever. That, that's all in the background. You know, we've got a problem right now. It needs to be fixed now. We, we, we can't train kids. I've, I've been a member of the footy club and all of that sort of stuff. We've got an issue now. Let's put them away. Let's do whatever we have to to stop it now. Do you want, to start, do you want us to stop this and actually get to the We know who stole the car. They caught him the night before. The judge let him off that morning. He had a curfew, right? And he kept on breaking curfew, stealing cars. The judge was so sick of him coming back, breaking his curfew. He lifted the curfew, let him out, and then that kid and his mates went and stole 26 cars from Friday to Sunday. So you tell me what, what's going on with the judges. If they're so, that's such good do-gooders, that's just wrong. Yeah, Curfews cannot be enforced, that's the law. So that's what we need to change. Curfews cannot be enforced. So these kids are going to be out by 10 pm, it's all bullshit. They're going to break the curfews, they've got to let them out on bail again. It cannot be enforced, you need to change the law. That's fact. Well, my name's Marina, I was broken into two weeks ago. My house was locked up tight. They broke into, they broke into my side door. They, this is too hard. Sorry, I just did it. Yeah, we're with you. Yeah. Anyway, um, I woke up to noise and I, I must have disturbed them. And I went outside. They had turned on every light in my house. They had stolen my car. They had stolen my daughter's car. My daughter was in the hospital and she's had a back operation in between all this. And I'm just sick and tired of it. We lived in a cold sack. We live in, in near um, the stadium. We're in the same place. We've got a street light straight outside. And you're saying we need more lights we need not. We had a street light. We had they, they they do what they want. It's a game to them. They're, it's a adrenaline rush. They, they, they don't care what you all are gonna say. They they need to be disciplined. And I believe that the court system needs to up, up, have a big shake-up. I, I really do mean this. Yeah. I have got a list here, but I can't read it. I'm just 